convertible cruising in the Florida sunshine? Always a fave. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Well, this week we're in Ocala, Florida to check out a couple fabulous Fords from the collection of Jim and Rick Schmidt. We're gonna look at a couple different approaches that Ford took to letting the sun shine in. We've got a 64 Galaxy XL500 convertible and a 58 Skyliner retractable hardtop. These are both incredible cars. So I say we get right to work. That is, if you can actually call this work. Check them out. Hey Rick, good to see you again, man. Great to see you, Dennis. <laughs> Looks like we've got a Ford theme going today. We've got a Ford theme going today. Back to the Fords, <laughs> and uh, and it's a uh, convertible theme too, which is odd for us because we don't have a lot of convertibles. Yeah, well, in this our one's collection. obviously a convertible. This one less obvious. But That's we'll a little get to less that. obvious, yeah, right? It's a convertible. <laughs> But you know, this 64, and that was really a good year, I think, from a design standpoint, uh, all around. I mean, I think the cars are really, it would, it would have been tough to decide what you wanted to buy if you weren't real It was a fantastic year. Interior warm. and exterior uh, styling was just, was just really going strong there, and you'd have a hard time deciding which yeah. car you wanted to buy if you didn't have a brand loyalty. Those were the days, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, this car is a fave of mine. You know, the 64 Galaxy 500 XL convertible, and then on top of that, Peacock blue. Oh my God, I've died and gone to heaven. <laughs> yeah, this car is beautiful. The moment I laid eyes on it, I was sold on it. Just the black and Peacock combination, the fact that it's just loaded up with all the options and the 390 automatic with air conditioning. This car up on the lift is just absolutely amazing. It's wow. uh, Every date code is is just crystal clear on in all the right places. It's got new old stock, original Ford exhaust with the right date codes wow. on it. It's a really, really nut and bolt, well done car. The interior though on this is just, like you say, I mean, 64, what a year for competitive interiors. Man, you, you slide mm -hmm. behind the wheel of this car. I usually like a colored interior. Uh -huh. I, like, I like an eccentric interior. I'm not into black interiors so much, but this car just pulls it off beautifully. Like I said, with all that chrome and aluminum going on. The speedometer is just like that. I mean, it's like this thing's been sitting on a showroom floor all its life. It's like a brand new speedometer. Yeah, that's, that's what really you know sold me on the car and, and appealed to me was there just wasn't so often when you when you get into a restored car, it's those little details that mm -hmm. show you the haggard past that exactly. the car had. You look at the dash and then all of a sudden, oh boy, yeah, you, know, right, you, yeah. you see these little hints of the uh, junkyard it got drug out but of. This just this, looks this, perfect. This, there's just nothing sh falling short on this car. And it's uh, brand new. dealer installed uh, AC there? Mm -hmm. And it works, blows it cold. Blows cold. A glass rear window. Glass, glass rear window. window. Wow, that's really nice. That's, that's, it looks better. It's easier to deal with over time. It doesn't yellow. There's so much trim on this car, and a lot of this is very light, very thin metal, thin yes. gauge metal. And boy, I can't believe mm -hmm. how straight it is. This trim line right through here is is mm -hmm. beautiful. Again, just the details in this car. I just think they're. I just think it's gorgeous. Now. You got a new engine up there, rebuilt engine 390, right? 390 four kind of barrel. Work, workhorse engine for Ford. Let's yes. go have a look at that. Baby. All right, let's go take, take a look. Take a long at walk. <laughs> wow, it's even got the chrome dress up on it too, right? Yes, this car's got everything. Thunderbird I, I, valve covers. Mm -hmm. Here again, even inside, you've got all this great looking what appears to be NOS stuff. I mean, of course, an auto light battery, but even your starter solenoid that, looks like NOS. That's a new old stock starter oh. solenoid. It's a new old stock uh, uh, washer bag. There's a lot of little details what in you, here. Where do you guys find all this stuff? You, you and your dad, <laughs> I mean, you, you got a line on all this stuff. It's, it's, <laughs> it's still floating around out there, you know? People keep hoarding it and then uh, metering it out on eBay one piece at a time. <laughs> well, she looks great with the top up, but a day like this, man, I say we put the top down oh, and yeah. test out this freshly re rebuilt 390. Let's do it. I all think right. you'll like it. I know I will. Ooh, very nice. <laughs> very Imp nice. Impulse starts. That's what we shoot for. What a day for a drive. I think this is one of the prettiest galaxies the 64 uh, ever made. And in my book, you got it in the right color. Yeah. This was not a real common color for the galaxy, though. You don't see many in this peacock color. No, I can't remember seeing a convertible in the peacock. I've seen a hard top or two mm -hmm. before. Very light touch on the steering. Yeah, doesn't it have a nice steering it on it? It does. 
Today they would call that overboosted. Yeah, yeah, they so really would. I always kind of like it. <laughs> it's it's fingertip for sure. Right. And that skinny wheel, that feel of the '60s. Mm -hmm. Oh, this this baby is a dream to drive. It is just perfect. Well, you know the dash is even really nice, and it's a padded dash in the mm -hmm. '64. Those are usually cracked and and gone. And a convertible with AC isn't necessarily all that common. You know, it's a lot of times mm -hmm. it's, you know, one or the other. You either right. got a convertible or you go with AC. It really pumps too. I mean, it really blows. Oh yeah. But. So on a really hot day, you put the top down and turn the AC on, right? Right, <laughs> and right. Then, and then you go from like 12 miles a gallon all the way down to eight. <laughs> and you're right about, uh, you know, it is the trim uh, that sort of clues you into the car's past a lot of times. And this car really, you know, even the little stuff, mm -hmm. it looks like it was well cared for through its life. But I'm, I'm just taken by that speedometer. That just looks brand new. Yeah, it's, it's got a beautiful shape to it. It's one of those kind of cars that you, that you can study and you notice different details every time you walk around it. Well, even that, that trim line around the trunk, I'd never really noticed before, mm -hmm. that, that crease. And you still run bias ply tires on your on your cars like this, or is it? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You get the feel, get the real feel. Yeah, I find on the bigger cars that they soak up the bias plies just fine. I'm not a real fan of running the bias plies on pony cars and, uh -huh. and uh, in certain muscle cars because the, the cars aren't heavy enough and, and, and the, the stiffness of the tire just overwhelms it. But, uh, yeah, on, plenty but of, on these big cars... Plenty of weight here. <laughs> <laughs> That's not an issue. They ride just fine. They, they kind of <laughs> howl around the corners, but uh, I do like to have the original look. It doesn't wander. Holds good temperature. Well, that's part of the challenge. Is, is it's no fun to go out cruising in a car that that has a bunch of problems. Uh, no, it it's takes, not. It takes all the fun out of the, <laughs> the hobby. So. Well, you know, it's a, there's a lot going on in these things, and when you when you do a complete restoration, man, you just never know what you've got to sort out in the end. Yeah, it's a beautiful car. This is like this is like being back at '64. Oh man, that Galaxy is sweet. <laughs> you do have that running off light. Man, I love those cars. Yeah, it's nice. But this, this is an interesting car. This is one of what I've always considered Ford's mechanical marvels. Yes. The retractable hardtop. 1958 Ford Skyliner. Skyliner, which right. Which is a retractable hardtop. And yeah, it's a complexity. <laughs> <laughs> Poetry in motion. I, but they're beautiful cars. Mm -hmm. um, and they only made them what 57, 8, and 9. 57, 8, and 9. And actually, the technology, the, all of the engineering that went into the retractable was, in theory, uh, done for the 56 Continental Mark II. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. That would have been a great looking retractable, wouldn't it? But, but it added so much more expense and complexity to a car that was already, already e e eclipsing $10,000 <laughs> yeah. that Ford just figured that, that that was just over the top and they decided not to use it. But then since they had that large investment just sitting there doing nothing, they figured that if they had installed it on the more affordable full-size Ford, Ford mm -hmm. that they would be able to actually build enough units to actually dig themselves out of the hole that they had dug by doing the project but they in the first place. couldn't have possibly ever done that. I mean, I, I mean, prob really. Probably not. It was probably a Band-Aid on a broken leg, but at least yeah. they put it to use. And then well, it is great. I mean, and, they're, and to they're some extent on all the T-Birds with the soft tops that went in yeah, the yeah. trunk used an a lot, of, lot that. of that same. This car actually has a, a family but, attachment. But not in one piece. Not mostly. in one piece for a lot of the time. <laughs> it was bought as a used car in around 1968 by my Uncle Bill. According to my dad, uh, blew up the first engine and may have gone Maybe through another. That does happen. I've done it. I've done uh, it. Sold it to my uh, other Uncle Bob, and then it got torn into a million pieces when my dad <laughs> offered to restore it for him. Yeah. And my dad's friend uh, uh, Jim Robinson in Canada says he wants it, buys it, ships it all up to Canada. He never touches it. So it's still in pieces. So it's still in pieces. And it comes back down here. And then it comes back down here. And, uh, <laughs> and about, I guess, three years ago was when we embarked on, on getting all those pieces put back together. Well, now, 58, they went from one headlight in 57 to, to two headlights. Um, Although it's a big car, it's actually surprisingly narrow. I mean, it looks big, but it's really narrow yeah. compared to that Galaxy. A lot of people don't even realize it because Ford did such a good job of masking it, but the 58 Ford was really just a cosmetically dressed up 57 Ford. Different they moldings, pulled it off, though. the headlights, the grille, and then the taillights. 
make it look like something completely different, yeah. but if you really look at the body lines, it's, really it's, it's 57 thing. Ford. And, and it is kind of a narrow body. They knew how to do interiors mm -hmm. in the 50s too. And I love, I love this interior. The fabric in these 50s cars is great. When you redid it, is that? That's the correct fabric. It's a reproduction, but it's very, very close to being genuine. And otherwise, it's a fairly simple dash. Mm -hmm. But the but red and white really plays great off the white exterior. Oh, man. You, know, you would think that all white retractable would be kind of a yawn, but this red interior just really brightens it brings it, it alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And is that a, it's a three on the tree? It's a, <laughs> a three. This thing's a three on the tree? It's a 332 with a three on the tree. I've, <laughs> I've, never, I've never seen another retractable of any year with that drive line in it. It's, it's got to be rare. It may be the only one still wow. puffing out there. And it really didn't come with any options new either. Obviously, the original owner of the... Uh, he didn't check off those other boxes, right? No. He checked the big one. No, he was like, I got to have that retractable <laughs> roof, but now I can't afford anything else. So we added the power windows and a power seat to it, and we did the restoration. Just because it belongs, just, right? Yeah, yeah. We had to do something to help the poor thing out. Well, you know, it's... it's uh, really a long flat deck back here because of course the roof's got to got to go in there yeah it's an and oddly you, proportioned car it, because it you is. have to fit that roof all the way behind the, and if you look seat. at the back here you know it's almost pickup truck yes you know it looks like this is a tailgate almost that you could you right know, right down. and the fuel fillers relocated to the quarter panel because mm, you can't sure, get the neck right, down to right. go down through the middle of the roof so so there's an awful lot of uh subtle differences to a retractable now you said this has a, a 332? 332. That was the uh, that was the bottom the lowest line displacement of the, of the Ford Edsel uh, uh, engine family. Well, let's let's go look at the uh, 332. All right. Ford's safety hood. Oh, and yep. V8 Interceptor. <laughs> Interceptor. All 332 <laughs> cubic inches of it. Hey, I'm not even sure. I've ever seen a 332, um, and that's a, an interesting block color. 1958. Only on the 332. Did they use that green? Man. So we did a, some some research on that just to make sure that we were doing the right thing before we put everything back together. <laughs> With all the work you've done here, you and it run, it makes good power. You you'll be surprised when you drive this just how well that 332 pulls. Well, uh, you know, it, 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 the car wants for nothing more. So. Uh, it's, it's a again, perfect match, engine to car, perfect day. Yep. Let's let's put this. Uh, hood down. Let's put this top. Let's cross down. our fingers and <laughs> feet. Put works. that roof down, right? <laughs> all right, sounds good. <laughs> and we'll go for a cruise. Okay, you're gonna talk me through this. This is a first. Okay, well, it has to be in neutral because it's got a safety switch. The top won't operate unless it's in neutral. All right, but it has to be started, right? Uh, it's started up. I don't think it has to be started, but I don't like the wear on the battery. Yeah, exactly. Like that. Neutral. And then just push in on the top button. Here, just push yeah, in. Push it in. All right. That is amazing. And isn't that such a nice finish? It's the, fabulous. The way, the way I love it. Boots. It's just fabulous. Yeah, it beats, beats the heck out of snapping a boot down and all that <laughs> other nonsense you have to do with a standard convertible. Wow. Well, let's go cruising. All right, let's cruise. like a Formula One car, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sort of. <laughs> but you know, I think they really pulled it off because it works well as a hard top and it works well as a as a convertible. Mm -hmm. Watching this top run is, I always describe it as poetry in motion, to watch mm -hmm. the top on a retractable go up or down. But I would imagine this roof is really heavy, actually. It is heavy and Ford wanted the car to be sitting Correct correctly when the, top was down. when the top was down. So when the top's up, the car's actually got a little bit of forward rake. It's got a little bit of hot rod to it. They always seem right. like they sat high. That explains it. It sits a little bit high in the ah. rear. You put the top down and then it's level because you get all that weight moved back over the rear axle. These things are pretty solid. Yeah. Have you noticed when you just give it a little bit of gas, it's got nice, nice torque and it's power? It's surprising. Usually when you go with the base engine in anything, it, it, it feels like it's it's having to overwork to, mm -hmm. to move the car. Well, this is a strangely optioned car. Yes. Littlest engine, three on the tree. This car is actually fun to drive because of that three on the tree, though. It makes decent power, and it's actually kind of a blast to go out and kick around in. It's just fun to shift a car. Yeah. It's just, it's just fun. That's the way I prefer it. But I do really like the way a three on a tree shifts. I like having the shifter here. 
I think it's convenient. Mm -hmm. When you have the top down, it really shows off this red and white interior too. Now this thing really screams. Yeah, I, I love this combination. I really think it's classy. Hey, there's a 64 Galaxy. Wonder who lives there. <laughs> so until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring. <laughs>